Prof Wan Nasib, Prof Wan Khaliza, Prof. Uh, I think all the speakers are here. Prof. Ah uh, oh yes, Prof Fatima. I see you. Assalamualaikum. And uh, Prof Jennifer, I saw her name somewhere. That oh yes, there you are. Okay, hi. <laughs> Hope everyone is okay. I think uh, let's give a few more minutes for the participants to come in and then uh, we can start the session. And Prof Jennifer, you're muted, <laughs> so can't hear you. Yes, <laughs> okay. Uh, Prof Wan, are you okay? I, I see your name flickering, uh, but I can't see your face. I'm okay. Can you oh, see okay, me? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so everyone's good. Kita tunggu ada a few more minutes and then uh, we start the session, okay? Can we know that uh, the participant, is it all uh, University Malaya staff or outsider? Uh, it's actually, we open it to all. Uh, cuma for this session, saya tak pasti sama ada ada dari luar University Malaya, but our previous sessions, because this is the uh, kali yang keenam, the previous sessions memang ada uh, participants from outside. So we do uh, disseminate and what we also do is we record the session. So it will be up on our social media, uh, mm. meaning that, um, you know, if you want to use this to circulate around to your other partners or anyone to, to tell about your centers, uh, please do so. Please help okay. us circulate and, uh, you know, increase more visibility on, on the, the things that we do because I think we do a lot of things, but sometimes we just need to let other people know, right? Okay. So, kali ni saya tak pasti. Uh, Yana, Haryana, ada tak pasti sebenar daripada luar? Any, any feedback? Uh, so far, based on the list, uh, tak ada, Prof. Ada, uh, tapi uh, I, I do know from um, the other sessions dulu memang ada. Yep, so, several, uh, several participants uh, from outside. The sharing session, it's uh, uh, really up to all of you. We uh, The slot is about 15 to 30 minutes, so you can expand and you can discuss uh, the slides that you have put up. If you need help uh, on our site, we can help you with the slides. Kalau ada masalah apa-apa dengan slides lah. Sometimes we don't know these things, can? <laughs> And uh, the Q&A will be at the end of the session. So I hope everyone can uh, wait until the end of all the three presenters have presented. And uh, we shall then, you know, comments with the Q&A. But at the meantime, uh, I also encourage the participants to write in the chat box. The chat box is working uh, just like our normal uh, classes. Lah. So if anyone wants to write their comments or their questions, uh, they may do so in the, in the chat box. Okay, I think uh, my watch says it's 9.30. Shall we start? Everyone's ready? Admin, boleh start? Boleh. Yeah. Boleh, bro. Yeah, boleh, bro. Okay. Boleh. Thanks, thanks. Right. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sorry, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everyone wherever you are. Um, so to, for today, this is the University Malaya Center of Research Sharing Session, Session ke-6, uh, 2021. And um, what we have today is uh, an interesting session by all our renowned speakers. Uh, we have um, with us uh, Professor Dr. Jennifer Doss from the Oral Cancer Research and Coordinating Center. We also have Professor Dr. Wan Haliza Abdul Majid from the LDMRC, Low Dimensional Materials Research Center. And we also have Prof. IR uh, Dr. Fatima Ibrahim from the CIME or Center for Innovation in Medical Engineering. Um, 
just to introduce, uh, my name is Noran. Uh, I'm from the Health and Wellbeing Research Center, so I'll be moderating this session for the day. Um, uh, what we're going to do is we will listen to all the speakers um, uh, respectively and they'll be sharing their research centre achievements and what they do and uh, the things that they have done or what they intend to do for about 15 to 30 minutes and then um, after all the speakers have uh, presented, we will then proceed on to the Q&A session. So maybe just for the audience, um, we'll, be record, we'll be recording the session. So I'd like to uh, request for your approval uh, on that. At the same time, uh, feel free to write in or put your comments on the chat box or even the questions on the chat box. And at the end of the all the presenters have presented, we will ask the questions aloud to allow the uh, presenter to then answer your question. So maybe without further ado, let me introduce to you the first speaker. We have uh, Professor Dr. Jennifer Geraldine Doss from, she's the head of the Oral Cancer Research and Coordinating Center, OCRCC. Um, she is the, uh, the, ORC, the OCRCC is actually located at the Dental Faculty University of Malaya. And Professor Dr. Jennifer leads the research team on health related quality of life for oral cancer patients in Malaysia. She completed her Bachelor of Dental Surgery in 1987 from UM. And following this, she went on to serve with the Ministry of Health for 14 years before joining uh, us in UM. She obtained her Master's in Community Dentistry with distinction from UM in 2000 and subsequently was awarded the prestigious Datuk Dr. Sulaiman Golden Jubilee Scholarship Award to do her PhD at Otago University in New, New Zealand. Um, uh, her PhD project was the first health-related quality of life to focus on cross-cultural adapting and validating instrument for oral cancer patients in Malaysia. She, also, she is also an international research collaborator with the Liverpool UK Quality of Life and PCI Head and Neck Cancer Group and the organizing chairperson for the annual National Month Cancer Awareness Week. Um, as well as a co-chairperson for the National Oral Cancer Research Initiatives in Malaysia. Her main research interests include psychological, psychosocial and social behavioural aspects of oral cancer, including the initiation of an oral cancer patient support care program at the dental faculty in UM. So, uh, may I present uh, Professor Dr. Jennifer? So, over to you. Thank you, Prof. Noran. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Good morning, everyone. And uh, while I just upload my slides, just to mention, actually, I'm. Uh, um, OK. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think I'm having problems uploading the slide here. You can share the slide with us, Prof. Sorry, I can't hear you. You can share the slides with us so we can control the slides for you because you are entered as guest, not using your UML ID. Yeah. Okay, so so I can I have to control the slides? Uh, you can control the slide. I okay, but I'm, I'm having difficulty uploading the slides. Yes, um, because you are in as guest. Okay, can you see my slides now? <clears throat> Not yet, bro. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> You can share the slides with us and the admin yes. will. Uh, yes, can I share the slides with you all? Now, how do I do yes. that? Send it to you by email or something? Yes, you can send by email first. Okay. So perhaps uh, if another speaker, maybe Prof Noran, would like to go first yeah, to sure. avoid the yes. audience from waiting. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, technical glitch to happen. <laughs> So, uh, okay, maybe then I introduce to you the second speaker um, who will be presenting first, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Wan Haliza Abdul Majid. Uh, she is the head for the Low Dimensional Materials Research Center or LDMRC. She's a professor at the Department of Physics and a head for the LDMRC UM. 
obtained her PhD in Material Science from Sheffield's UK and appointed as the Deputy Dean and Dean of the Institute of Postgraduate Studies from 2017 to 2019. Her main research areas are various low-dimensional physics aspects including theoretical stimulation, materials, engineering and design, and device physics and prototype development. She's also a principal investigator for many research projects, including RLGS, Science Fund, FRGS, IIRG, and UMRG. And she has published over more than 150 scientific articles, book chapters, and patents. She has an index of uh, almost 20 with over many citations, 3,000 citations on her research work and have won several awards, um, including the gold medal in the ITEX 2017. 2019, sorry. She's also a fellow member of the Malaysian Association of Solid States since 2011 and a chairperson of the MESS chapter from UM uh, from 2019 to up until 2023. Uh, a very renowned uh, researcher. And um, over to you, Prof. Okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for a very kind introduction. <laughs> okay, um, I have already actually um, give the slide to the um, uh, organization. organizer. Can you please uh, upload it for, for me? Because I tried myself just now, I find some problem doing so. <clears throat> right, okay. Um, so I cannot control it myself, right, from here? Uh, you can, Prof. One moment. You will be control okay. for you. Right, okay. Okay, um, thank you very much uh, uh, for this, um, uh, what we call, this opportunity to some sort of like, um, uh, share with you with you all the uh, what we do in low dimensional material research center. Um, okay, um, how do I control? I press down or I, it seems not to move. Uh, where is the control button? If I want to control, I can seems cannot to find it. Uh, it's okay, Prof. Maybe you can just uh, give us a cue so we can control the time for you for the next slide. Uh, okay, right. Thank you very much. Okay, Prof. Okay. Uh, yes. Next slide, please. Okay. So um, this is this are uh, our research focus uh, in LDMRC. Uh, we are working on cost-effective production of new novel uh, for low-dimensional nanomaterials. Uh, we're also working on low-dimensional nanosystem for advanced technology innovation. And we are also um, doing applications of low-dimensional materials for enhance of quality of life. Uh, basically, our research uh, among our members is uh, multidisciplinary and uh, mostly involved in uh, research and development in uh, nanotechnology. So that that uh, that, uh, that uh, our uh, research focus, uh, trust areas in our research focus is we involved in inorganic low dimensional thin films and nanostructures, mainly uh, silicon, carbon, uh, three nitrides and also, and also metal oxide. Some of our members, uh, 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 like myself and a few other members are focusing on uh, our trust areas is uh, organic electron electronics, for example, uh, OLED fabrication, organic light emitting diode, uh, the screen that you use in your handphones, okay, watch, things like that. Uh, polymers and ceramic films and nanostructures, graphene based nanocomposite and also uh, bio uh, nanoelectrics. Uh, nanoelectronic materials. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, these are our members uh, uh, in the low dimensional materials. We have quite a number of members actually. Uh, we, uh, I'm the head of these uh, low dimensional materials, and we have um, uh, two. Uh, we have a few associate professors. I think one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. 
Dr. Goh and Dr. Azula Liani has been appointed as a associate professor recently. And we have uh, three senior, uh, we have about five senior lecturers. Uh, in terms of organization, in terms of management, we have one research officer, Dr. Muhammad Arif, and we have one science officer, and we have uh, one, uh, uh, another research officer, uh, Nurul Hidayah. So uh, if you look at our development uh, throughout the years from 2017 and 2020, our postgraduate uh, is um, about uh, 54 uh, uh, postgraduate students in our centres because we are quite a big numbers. But there are many lecturers in our centres. Next slide, please. So um, uh, one of the activities that we do in our research centre is synthesis and characterization of low dimensional materials in, low, uh, in LDMRC. Uh, so uh, our activities uh, would be uh, evolving around uh, a few methods. So we can divide it into uh, two main methods, which is physical method and chemical method. Uh, so there are a few methods uh, uh, in physical method, for example, MOCVD. So in MOCVD, we are the first uh, universities that is using this method in the country. Okay, uh, and we have uh, attract a lot of industry people and also uh, other um, uh, university outside Malaysia to collaborate with us. We also use chemical weapon deposition. This is a bit special because this is inbuilt uh, system, which uh, we built it ourselves. So we have um, some of the system we built ourselves. We have plasma enhanced chemical weapon deposition, hot wire chemical weapon deposition, and also plasma assisted uh, hot wire chemical weapon deposition. Uh, there are a few physical weapon deposition that are used in our center to uh, uh, deposit or to synthesize low dimensional materials. Uh, and then in chemical method, we use several methods uh, to actually uh, produce uh, low dimensional materials. For example, uh, soil gel technique, uh, sonar chemical method, hydrothermal method, and also spin coating uh, organic solution. Right? Uh, Hammers method, we also use Hammers method and also uh, LB uh, technique. Then more larger uh, deposition technique uh, in our work. Next slide, please. So uh, this is in the forms of pictures, uh, the uh, trust areas and also the members that involve in the trust areas that I have mentioned. So we have, uh, for example, uh, Dr. Shahimi uh, involved in tree nitride epitaxy. Uh, Dr. Venga involved in uh, bio nanoelectronics. Uh, Dr. Goh in chemical weapon deposition and other members uh, in the center. So uh, I will mention one by one because it will be taking a long time. Maybe I don't have enough time for that. Please, uh, to the next slide. Uh, so this is the detail, so I, I won't be going in the detail because, uh, uh, as I said to you, uh, we do not have that much time to, to go into the detail. Uh, uh, Dr. Shahimi uh, is involving in tree nitride epitaxy and optoelectronics nanofabrications. Uh, so basically, um, using uh, metal MOCVD system, okay, uh, metal oxide vapor deposition system. So uh, we have attracted one LRDS uh, for this work. And uh, currently, uh, 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 we have produced more than 20, uh, I think around 20 publications in, the, in these trust areas for the past two years. Next slide, please. Uh, Dr. Goh uh, is involved with uh, chemical vapor deposition silicon and carbon-based thin films. So if uh, any of you interested to um, to collaborate and do works with this, you can uh, contact with uh, Dr. Goh. Next slide, please. Then we have uh, Dr. Chu. Dr. Chu, uh, uh, his main areas is semiconductor and magnetic nanostructures, uh, synthesis and applications. So uh, uh, outside researchers from this center who would like to collaborate uh, in this area can uh, contact uh, with uh, Dr. Chu. Next slide, please. 
and myself uh, is involved in organic hybrid electro uh, electronic materials application so uh, i'm also working in theory as uh, basically uh, due to the um, uh, now nowadays it's, it's very difficult to get grant okay so the research focus is going into theory because when you go to theory you don't actually need that much money so i'm also working on um, uh, volatile uh, um, V organic field effect transistor simulation. So we have actually published one papers in this area recently, uh, this year, 2022, 2021, uh, in Q2 papers. And I'm also working on uh, uh, WAFAC uh, uh, organic field effect transistor uh, by combining it with uh, uh, argentum nanowires. So uh, with this, in this work, we have produced about three or four papers uh, recently this year. And uh, yeah, so uh, next slide, please. So in this slide, uh, we, we show uh, the results that we have, we have obtained, which has been included in the paper. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Khawla is working on uh, solar and photovoltaic materials. Um, the technique that she used in, uh, in this um, uh, research is the spin coating deposition method. Uh, and then uh, she also do fabrication of device, uh, construction of device is shown in the diagram here. And she also uh, focus on electrical characterization for solar cell. Uh, in her work. So, so far, her efficiency, I think, is already more than 9% currently. Move on, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, Dr. Selvi uh, is working on polymers and ceramic uh, films and nanostructures. Uh, so, um, she has uh, produced, I think, uh, uh, quite a number of papers in this field, okay? So uh, she's also, uh, I'm also involved in this field uh, and also Dr. Azu is also involved in this field. So uh, collaborating among ourselves uh, in the group uh, to uh, produce a quite outstanding uh, result uh, in the polymers and ceramic uh, films and nanostructures. So some of the papers are in Q1 uh, papers. Right, can we move on? Uh, Dr. Venga is working on bio nano electronics. Uh, she, uh, uh, I'm also collaborating with him. Uh, so uh, he's working on fundamental studies, uh, biophysical approach, development of biosignal measurement platforms, uh, fabrications of sensors, bio inspired uh, devices, mm -hmm. and also uh, prototype testing and also commercialization. So his work uh, has attracted some industry in uh, UK to uh, actually uh, produce uh, a, a real device uh, related to uh, detection of uh, 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 what we call detection of, um, uh, uh, for example, uh, COVID, uh, um, what we call, uh, uh, to detect uh, COVID uh, in that sense, okay? So, so uh, he's in the process of um, uh, actually commercializing, uh, commercialize uh, the product uh, of what he, uh, he's been researching on. Next, please. Uh, these are our facilities uh, that is available in the center. We have MOCVD, metal oxide chemical vapor disposition system. We have spin coater, glove box, photolithography, panel project, furnace, centrifuge. So uh, these uh, facilities are open to uh, the public uh, outside there. If you, if you want to uh, uh, use these facilities, you can just go into our web page and um, contact us to uh, make a booking. Next. Uh, another equipment that we have in the lab, uh, you'll be visible uh, near IR, a surface profiler meter, solar simulator, a hole measurement system, Promometer, uh, PL, Raman spectroscopy, spe spectroscopy, 
high resolution XRD. This is the new addition to our uh, equipment that we have in the lab, which we procure, uh, procure through LRDS grant. Uh, so this is quite uh, uh, significant equipment to have uh, for material studies. So uh, it is open to uh, you to actually uh, use this uh, uh, high resolution XRD through the uh, our booking system. And we have AFM, we also have impedance analyzer. Next, please. Uh, this is 2020. So um, the uh, actually I have uh, somehow um, sent the wrong slide to you all, okay? But it's okay. Uh, I have already updated our publication to uh, 2021, right? But uh, due to the technical glitch, uh, so we have this data uh, to discuss, never mind. So uh, in 2020, uh, we have published around 79 ISI papers uh, with 10,782 citation. Uh, most of other papers are in Q1 and Q2, about 62% of our papers are in Q1, Q2, and uh, another 38% is in the Q3, Q4. Uh, so uh, we have collaboration with uh, local partners, international, about four into 2020. Um, and also uh, spons uh, we have a joint ventures, about three joint ventures uh, in 2020. Okay, so it's the data would be different in 2021. Uh, next, please. Uh, so this is uh, activities that we do uh, in the research center, and I'm I'm proud to say that uh, one of our PhD student, uh, which is uh, Farah Hanan Abdunasi, has won uh, first place in the uh, national competition, um, national competition uh, for uh, uh, material science, and uh, last week she uh, representing Malaysia. Uh, to uh, for this competition and see she have won won the second place in the world material competition so we are pr uh, proud in LDMRC we can produce a uh, such a uh, postgraduate student uh, with such quality so I'm proud for her I'm proud for UM as well and we are proud at L LDMRC to be able to contribute uh, in terms of quality students next please uh, these are some activities that we do in 2020. Uh, uh, we have regular meeting in the center to uh, actually uh, see our uh, development and also uh, plan a strategic uh, way to actually improve ourselves to the next level. We also collaborate with uh, industry uh, to see uh, areas that we can actually bring our uh, uh, knowledge and also uh, what we have done in the lab uh, to uh, possibly uh, market uh, the outside market. So this is activity that we did in 1st October 2020, visit to Cytonex for nanomedical research collaboration. Next, please. Okay, so uh, as usual, uh, OSH is very important. We, we need to make sure that our lab is set, our laboratory is say for a staff and student uh, and um, uh, we also involved in uh, what we call uh, publishing uh, or make known of what we do in the lab to uh, outside people uh, in the country so uh, uh, this one that we show in uh, to you uh, 17 march 2020 is a cover picture for Bar barita harian online uh, article uh, in the uh, metal oxide chemical vapor deposition that we did in the uh, lab, okay, which is uh, one of the uh, highly uh, recognized uh, work uh, in the country. Next, please. Uh, social activities, okay, uh, bibliometric, scientometric workshop, okay, one of uh, significant activity that we do uh, to keep track of our uh, uh, achievement uh, in research. Uh, we also uh, receive a visit from uh, international university. So as, sh as shown in the picture there, uh, visit by uh, Seoul National University on the 5th February 2020. Next, please. 
Okay, so uh, we collaborate not just uh, among ourselves, but we collaborate among the members uh, in the faculty. So uh, the one activity that we do is um, uh, also we have a joint meeting uh, with uh, faculty members from Institute of Biology, Chemistry, and Mathematics. Uh, this is for uh, to obtain IIRG grant. Okay, fortunately we get one grant. Okay, uh, through IIRG uh, application. Okay, uh, we also involved with uh, innovation talk. Okay, as shown in the picture there. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, so these are some other activities that we do in the lab. So we realize that uh, it is not only important to actually get involved with a scientific uh, community among ourselves, faculty, and also universities. But we also uh, involved with the uh, public. Okay, so from time to time, we invite students from uh, schools to uh, come to our lab and actually uh, see what we are doing in the lab. So, for example, one picture there, you have a, a visit from uh, Maaha Tafis uh, Sapang to our lab. Okay, so we show them around uh, in the lab so that some of them perhaps will be inspired and uh, you know would like to. Uh, continue uh, uh, in STEM education in the future. So another thing or uh, initiative that we do is what we call as low dimensional material research young scientists uh, boot camp. So that was carried out in 2019. That was to attract um, students from other university uh, to come to our lab so that they uh, see do they would do hands on. Uh, uh, experiment in our lab. So uh, with this initiative, uh, we are we were hoping to get some of them to come back to us and continue their uh, master's and PhD degree. So that is an uh, initiative that we did in LDMRC to attract students from other universities to actually come and do research with us. Because students in UM, they perhaps, uh, for example, undergraduate students in UM, they perhaps know us, but students from outside uh, UM, uh, maybe uh, uh, we have to give them a chance, expose them uh, what we have in the lab so that some of them uh, would come and join us as a postgraduate student. Okay, next please. Okay, there are many more okay, uh, activities that we do. So, for example, we enter uh, 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 innovation, uh, what we call innovation competition. And also uh, the first picture there is one another student of us, uh, uh, Dr. Adila now. Uh, she managed to uh, participate in Home Lab 2019 and uh, get, I think, second prize for it, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so uh, we also uh, joined, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, seminar, things like that. Uh, the second picture is uh, myself involved in uh, um, I was invited as a uh, women in physics speakers okay, for the nas national e event. Okay? So there are many more, which I, I, I think maybe I don't have time to uh, describe it. Can you move on? Right. These are some of the competitions that we uh, uh, joined in the, in, in, uh, at national uh, level. Okay and seminars that we joined. Can, can you move on? In 2019, this was activity in, in 2019. Yes, please quickly go to the next slide. Right. Uh, we received uh, quite a number of awards uh, for thousand, uh, thousand, 2020, about 20, 12 international and seven local awards as listed in this line. Next, please. Okay, mm -hmm. I think... Uh, uh, Maybe I have used all my time, I think. I'm not sure. Am I using all the time? Right. Do I have more time? Yeah, we can, we can allow a few more minutes. Uh, okay. Right. So, uh, as I have mentioned to you, I, uh, unfortunately, I have um, sent you the wrong slide. But uh, it's okay. I think uh, uh, if... Um, I think I have some sort of like... Uh, uh, inform everyone here what we do uh, in uh, Low Dimensional Material Research Center. And we welcome any one of you who would like to uh, collaborate with us. Okay, collaborate with us. Just contact 
our web page and also um, uh, we have uh, Facebook as well. So you can uh, Google and look at the uh, our uh, Facebook and also uh, web page. And currently, uh, our recent activity is uh, what we call as Low Dimensional Material Research Center Lecture Series. Okay, so the next uh, one will be next week uh, le lecture series. Uh, so I hope uh, it's free. It's free for everyone uh, to join this lecture series. Uh, the objective is to share our knowledge uh, with the public and also uh, to um, uh, some sort of like uh, uh, make ourselves visible. Okay, so uh, so it, it will be uh, this lecture series will be given by uh, our lecturers in LDMRC ourselves. Okay, so the objective is to share with the public as much as possible what we do in the lab. Okay, so uh, I would welcome everyone to come to this uh, lecture series, uh, join us. And maybe uh, by joining that le the lecture series, you know you know more what we do in the lab, and perhaps initiate a collaboration between you and ourselves. With that, I would like uh, to thank you very much for the organizing organizer to allow us uh, uh, this opportunity to give us this opportunity uh, to share what we have in the lab and also maybe open up a collaboration path with uh, uh, the public and also. Uh, the researchers in UN. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Wan Haliza Abdul Majid, um, also a collaborator in one of our research. Uh, yes. Thank you for sharing uh, what uh, LDMRC I hope, does. Uh, I hope everything goes well with your project. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, thank you for sharing um, the facilities that you have, especially the equipment component, which I think that would be very useful for the listeners uh, here, um, yes. as well as when we uh, we then publicize this uh, session that we have done. Uh, I suppose the, the equipments will be very useful for the for researchers who are interested in using mm -hmm. some of the equipments. And I would also like to uh, congratulate um, you and your center on the very impressive uh, publications as well as high quality work done. Yeah, Even thank though you very we are much, under yeah. pandemic COVID-19, tapi uh, it menunjukkan sama, seolah-olah tak ada, tak ada kesan. Ada kesan, tapi ada kesan. Um, it, it just shows that human beings or, or we ourselves are very resilient in that sense that um, uh, work is still being done and I mean as, as much as we could. Lah. Yes. Uh, so those are very, very impressive uh, results that you have shown in LDMRC. And I do hope that um, our wish as well as yours that uh, this session will build collaboration and synergic uh, links opportunities for all other researchers as well. Yes. So Prof. Wan, thank you. Uh, can thank you, you very much. Yeah. Uh, Wait until the the end of the session. There will be the Q and A session at the at the end of the session. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so for the next speaker, I think I'll call back upon Prof. Uh, Dr. Jennifer. Yep, yes. you're there. Yeah. I'm here. Thank you. Yes. yes. And I think I've sent my slides and. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll just ask I'll... whether the admin will be able to upload it. Yeah, I think they're doing that. Yeah. Yep. So it's up. So yeah, thank you very yours. much. Oh. Thank you very much, Prof Moran. Uh, sorry for the earlier glitch here. Yeah? So uh, what I'll be doing <clears throat> to, for everyone this morning is to give a, a very quick overview of what we do at our center, Oral Cancer Research and Coordinating Center, OCRCC. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So our center focuses actually on oral cancer, right? Now, why oral cancer? I think main reasons being there's still very, very low awareness. <clears throat> Excuse me if I do my voice does break up or I cough because I'm just recovering from a bad flu. Yeah, so please bear with me. <clears throat> so at the moment in Malaysia, we have very low awareness of oral cancer. <clears throat> as compared to other cancers in Malaysia. And what is unique about oral cancer is there's very poor prognosis. The five-year survival rate is actually less than 50%, which is much lower compared to other cancers. And this is mainly because of the delayed presentation of our oral cancer patients in Malaysia. 
Now, oral cancer is largely preventable and it's because it's mainly due to uh, risk habits such as smoking, alcohol consumption and betel quid. And I think one of the most important aspects of oral cancer is the impact it has on a person's quality of life. Now, being very central, located in a very central part of our body, which is our face, anybody suffering from this disease will definitely be impacted in their daily functioning, such as chewing, speaking, etc. And it brings about a lot of uh, psychosocial impacts on them in their daily lives. So our niche area as such is on early detection of oral cancer. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is the organizational structure of our center. Uh, OCRCC was formed in 2005 and by Prof. Rosna Zain, who now acts as an advisor to our center. So this is our structure here. We have a head, myself, a deputy head, Associate Professor Dr. Zuraiza Zaini, and we have two research officers who are actually pillars at the OCRCC. Now our members at OCRCC are mainly comprised of uh, those at the dental faculty, but they range uh, from various disciplines in dentistry. We have surgeons, oral surgeons, oral pathologists. We have uh, those in the oral biology field. And we have also those in special needs, to name a few, as well as some people in the periodontal, <coughs> periodontal uh, discipline. Now, what exactly do we do? There are four main essential things that we do in OCRCC. Firstly, we act as a resource center. We have a data and biospecimen banking, which is unique yeah? uh, in Malaysia. It is the currently now, uh, well, when it first started in 2005, we were the only center having a oral cancer biobanking. Now, besides being a resource center, we also conduct research, various kinds of research in oral cancer, which we which I will present shortly. We also run training modules, yeah. And these modules are in the form of workshops or seminars, and uh, as well as we do offer attachments for postdoctorate students, postgrad students and undergrad students who wish to to be attached to our center short term to learn about what we do there. And then of course we have a community engagement which is uh, quite established now where the main aim is to raise awareness and promote early detection as well as we have started our latest activity on patient support care for oral cancer patients. Yeah. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so let's go one by one. Yeah. As a resource center, we have readily available specimens and data and it is termed as the Malaysian Oral Cancer Database and Tissue Bank System or MOCDTBS. Okay, so what kind of data and tissues do we collect here? In terms of tissues, we have oral cancer tissues as well as oral potentially malignant tissues as well. And we have some controls. So this uh, forms our tissue bank mainly. And in terms of database, <clears throat> We have uh, social demographic, clinical pathologic parameters, quality of life and survival data of, of the patients uh, with these conditions. And the type of tissues that we use are shown here, yeah? blood, cell lines, saliva, etc. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, our research areas, yeah, so you can see there's a wide range of uh, research areas that we cover and that reflects the, the the diversity of research that our members do from their various disciplines of dentistry. So we have the cellular molecular 
pathology where our uh, oral biologists at uh, the dental faculty, they look at cancer mechanisms as well as pathogenesis of cancer at a cellular and molecular levels. Then we have these omics studies, which are basically genomics, proteomic, transcriptomic research, looking at gene and protein expressions of cancer patients. Then we have the diagnostic and prognostic tool, mainly to facilitate early detection. And in this, in, in, in this we have previously collaborated and I think we have one or two that are currently we are collaborating with with other faculties in the university. Basically this these uh, tools are meant to detect abnormalities in the oral mucosa prior to any uh, clinical manifestation yeah? and the purpose is for early detection. Then we have some translational research in collaboration with it with other uh, bodies, for example, with uh, Cancer Research Malaysia, and it's basically from lab to clinic. Yeah. We have our epidemiological studies looking at distribution and patterns of oral cancer in the Malaysian population. We have our quality of life studies focusing on quality of life for uh, cancer patient, oral cancer patients as well as their caregivers, and our social behavioral research which basically looks at psychosocial research in these two areas. In fact, these three here are my areas as well. We look at psychosocial aspects of, of oral cancer because of the impact it has on uh, the sufferers' lives, as well as uh, other aspects, for example, health-seeking behavior and thing, uh, things like that, which give us some insights on how oral cancer patients behave that lead to their delayed presentation, causing a very high, at least two thirds of the oral cancer patients in Malaysia come at late stages. They present uh, at late stages and this, certainly compri compromises their uh, prognosis. Yeah? Next slide, please. OK, some of our research highlights are, for example, in the development of Malaysian oral cancer cell lines uh, through Mal OCRCC's biobanking system. A uh, successful um, collaboration was established with uh, Cancer Research Malaysia to develop Malaysian oral cancer cell lines which was an important milestone yeah, for oral cancer in Malaysia. And we are also looking now at OCRCC of perhaps uh, looking at cell lines for oral potentially malignant disease in the few coming future. Yeah? Another area that is of highlight is um, diagnostic and prognostic tools, uh, an IIRG project that was recently um, been awarded for uh, looking at developing an objective and highly reproducible prognostic stratification criteria for oral leukoplakia, which is an oral potentially malignant disease. Yeah. <clears throat> OK, can we move on, please? To the next slide. OK, another highlight is in quality of life for our oral cancer patients and survivors. As part of our patient support care, we received our IIRG about three years ago, and uh, this was to utilize uh, intelligent health systems technology to facilitate yeah, a more personalized support care program for oral cancer patients beyond the boundaries of the clinic. And uh, we are happy to, to, to mention here that we have developed um, in collaboration. Yeah, this is a collaborative uh, research with the Faculty of Computer Science and Sports Science, and we have developed a mobile application for cancer support called the Max, and we are in the midst of testing it out on our patients and survivors. And I think this is an area perhaps that in future uh, we could look for probable uh, collaboration for marketing it and things like that. Can, can I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> OK, so these are some of our publications that has come out in ISI as well as Scopus journals uh, or from our various uh, niche areas of research. And to date, uh, 
from 2005 to 2020, we've got about more than 180 articles, of which about 79% are in ISI Q1 and Q2. The next slide, please. Yeah, some of the other areas and our publication as well. Okay, next slide. OK, besides the research, we move on to the training. Now, at OCRCC, our members developed this module called the Oral Detect module, which I think they have patented. And um, it is a training package yeah, meant for uh, various uh, target groups, for example, dental professionals or students, either undergraduate or postgraduate, students, basically practitioners, <clears throat> to train them in early detection of oral cancer and in recognizing early lesions. Yeah, So this module has been very well received and uh, to date we have had um, certain public universities, for example, UKM uh, asking us to, to run this workshop for them. We've had some private universities, for example, SEGI, Lincoln, Massa as well. And of course, one of our main clients is the Ministry of Health, where we uh, annually we do a training session for all the young specialists or the young dental officers uh, starting to work at the ministry just as a refresher. And we've even at our dental faculty, we've started actually to introduce this training module for our final year undergraduate students and even postgraduate students. It started off as a face to face module, but because of the pandemic last year, we've successfully uh, turned it into an online module and it has been very well received and the outcomes of it is very good because it's like a, a, a pre-test and post-test involved and you can actually see very significant improvement once the participants have undergone this module. Yeah. OK. The next slide, please. Then we come to our community engagement programs, one of which is the Oral Cancer Patient Support Care Program, which was initiated yeah, in, the, in 2017 to, at our Faculty of Dentistry. Now, in the whole country, uh, I can confidently say this is the uh, one of the first oral cancer patient support care. You see, we, we hear a lot about support care groups for other very prominent cancers like breast cancer, prostate cancer, etc. But oral cancer lacks visibility. And so we decided that considering the high impacts faced by our patients, we need to uh, come up with such a program for their benefit, yeah, for the patient's benefit, as well as the caregivers who would join in. So in 2017, we uh, with through a multidisciplinary effort within our faculty, we initiated this program. And the purpose of this program is to provide holistic supportive care and wellness activities for our survivors, caregivers, and even our ongoing patients um, beyond the clinic. Yeah, sometimes they seek for support in, in various ways that perhaps is beyond our clinicians. Yeah, and so this is the purpose of this support care group. Next slide, please. So this was some uh, photos from our launching ceremony. We had our pro chancellor at that time, Top One Dato Sri Haja, Dr. Aisha Ong at University of Malaya to graciously officiate this um, this program for us, yes. Next slide. Yeah, so this was our launching ceremony and at that launch we came up with our own logo. Which is the oral cancer patient support care logo. Yeah, OK, next slide please. So what exactly do we do in this program? One of the things that we mainly do is to provide peer support group sharing sessions and they are facilitated by an oral cancer survivor. And this is our oral cancer survivor, Mr. Leonard Gunting, an excellent and extremely motivated survivor who actually 
has become um, a, a backbone to our uh, patient support, this peer support sharing program. And it's through him that all patients come together in small groups and they learn from each other's experience. Yeah. Next slide, please. OK, and now because of the pandemic, uh, of course, patients were very apprehensive to come to the clinic. So it was very interesting that we it was a milestone actually in our patient support care last year when we decided to change it to an online session. So actually the online session started this year and it was very well received by our patients and it is very uh, heartening to know that despite the pandemic being uh, you know, separated in that way, everyone will, were able to still come together and encourage each other. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so what are the other activities that we do that actually uh, uh, is an opportunity, is acts as a platform for collaboration with other uh, agencies? We have activities run by industries as well as NGOs. For example, we had the uh, National Cancer Society of Malaysia to come in and teach our patients art therapy as a form of stress relief. We had our, some of our oral health industry partners to come periodically and, and give talks. And then, of course, we've had even our um, some of our grooming, self-grooming sessions by Mary Kay, yeah? cosmetic companies who come in to actually improve the confidence of our patients in teaching them how to groom themselves because many of them do have facial scars. And so I see this as a very uh, interesting opportunity for other agencies to come in to actually contribute to our activities here. The next slide, please. <clears throat> and we've, in conjunction with this program, we've run uh, two cancer, World Cancer Day workshops with uh, the appropriate theme where all our uh, cancer survivors, oral cancer survivors come together and we've drawn up an agenda for them and we get various um, uh, speakers to come from, for example, our psycho psychologist from PPUM or our dietitians or even our own lecturers. And then we've also had um, spot signs as it being one of our collaborative efforts. They also come in to teach our patients on simple upper limb exercises for their fitness and physical well-being. Next slide, please. OK, so this is the mobile application cancer support or MAX that I talked about earlier. That is a collaborative effort. It's part of our IIRG project with the Faculty of Computer Science and Sports Science. So we've come up with this app. And we are what you see in the photographs here is the beta testing of the apps with our patients. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, this is the one of the same uh, photos as just now. Our uh, peer support program activities. Yeah. Next slide, please. OK, besides our patient support care program, we are quite established in uh, our community engagement in in promoting oral cancer awareness every year at an annual event, which is called Macau. Yeah? And every year in November, we have this event. And what's unique, it's, it's a collaborative effort with 22 agencies. We just finished our event for this year which fell on the 7th, huh? the launching was on the 7th, but it was a purely um, online event. It was just through Facebook, so that was unique this year. Whereas last year we had a very closed door kind of event with limited uh, attendees. And of course we had the minister to grace our launching as well as our own VC there. And um, previous years we've had it in various public areas, for example, in uh, day one uh, DBKL car free morning. Uh, the purpose was to attract as many public as possible to give visibility to mouth cancer awareness. So um, yeah. next slide, please. 
So these are previous events uh, we've had uh, in, um, I think this is in um, Taman Botani Shalam. We've had it in so many places. This was, yes, at DBKL with the Dato Banda here, helping launch our event, which was very successful because uh, it, it drew a lot of public attention, yeah? And next slide, please. So what's unique about this mouth cancer awareness is it col we collaborate with 22 partner agencies and OCRCC takes the lead in being the chair chair organizing committee for this year. So we have the involvement of many dental schools, public dental schools. We have private dental schools as well. We have professional associations to, to join us as well as government agencies uh, like Army as well as Ministry. Ministry plays a so important uh, uh, role. They give us very good support. And we have Cancer Research Malaysia here and NGO. So we have all our partners here and I think this has been very successful year after year. OK, next slide, please. Besides that, we also run other community engagement programs, for example, exhibitions, uh, mouth cancer screenings, webinars, workshops, yeah, in various uh, venues. This is in PPUM, I think, during the, the week of mouth cancer, which falls in November every year. And I think, yes, I think that this is the last slide. So basically what I've shown you all is the things that we do in OCRCC. So can we move to the last slide, please? So in a nutshell, what are the opportunities that we offer at OCRCC eh, for, for consideration? Now, so far our members have come from mainly from uh, our faculty, but we'd like to open up for new membership from different disciplines, from different faculties in the university. We, we very warmly invite any other researchers who feel that y'all can fit in into some of the research that we do to please come on board and join us as members. We also would like to invite multidisciplinary collaboration in research that we do. And I think I've given you an overview of the type of research. That's the beauty of oral cancer. We, we range, our research ranges right from molecular level, cellular level, right to psychosocial level. So I think there's uh, enough of of variation that to, uh, to draw in uh, collaborations from other faculties. And then we also would like to invite uh, other NGOs, industries, or other faculties. If you feel you can contribute to our oral, oral cancer patient support care program in any way, in any talks or workshops or anything, that would be wonderful. And of course, in our mind, we have for future a plan to expand the marketing of our Max. At the moment, we are testing it specifically on oral cancer patients, but however, the, the mobile apps is designed to even be used by any other cancer patient. So there's potential for collaboration here. And of course, in terms of our oral detect program, uh, we've run, as I told you earlier, we've run these workshops at our faculty as well for undergraduate and postgraduate students. And I think I would like to open this to perhaps the medical faculty to offer these workshops for final year undergraduate students. The reason being uh, through one of our recent uh, research that we did in 2017 through our postgraduate students, looking at health seeking behavior of our oral cancer patients, we found that um, our cancer, oral cancer patients, when they notice an abnormality in your mouth, they don't really go to the dentist. The first people they go to is the, uh, besides other, other uh, options that they use for coping, for example, self remedy, buying over the counter medicines thing, or seeking traditional help, the first health practitioner they approach are GPs, medical GPs. Now, this was a very in interesting fact we discovered. And because of that, uh, we would like to be able to, to uh, offer our, our training package to undergraduate students fi at final year, medical students before they move out into practice as well as even pharmacists who, well, of course, they are not going to detect early lesions, but they certainly 
our first contact with some of our oral cancer patients who approach pharmacists to get over the counter medicines for non healing ulcers or pain. And perhaps we would like to sensitize pharmacists about uh, being more um, uh, alert when people come and ask them for such things so that they can at least be more discerning in directing them to the nearest dental clinic. So this is some of the opportunities that I think uh, we've outlined for our centre. Yeah? So with that, I thank you very much. <coughs> thank you, thank Prof. You, Prof. Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer. Even though you're not feeling you're not well, feeling well uh, uh, thank yeah. you for joining us today. And I think uh, there are a lot of things that the Oral, center, oral Cancer Center, uh, Research and Coordinated coordinating centres are doing, especially I, I like the part where you have the diverse research area in the sense that you've got pathology, omic studies, diagnostic, prognostics, epidemiology, the whole works. Maybe to add on another one would be the implementation science and oral cancer because I see NIH, the National Institutes of Health in US is promoting implementation research or implementation mm. science in a very big way. So maybe yeah. that would be another package to add on to the, the work that yeah. you're doing. I mean, the wonderful work that you're doing. Um, and uh, I really like the training oral detect online module that you have converting a face to face into online. And I think the last point that you made just now was very, very important. <laughs> uh, I might link you with uh, Prof. Yazid, our undergraduate deputy dean. Yes, I was hoping maybe, for that. <laughs> yes, maybe some yeah. form of uh, a session can be done because I, I do know that our medical students have a program called Printis where they've completed their medical studies but uh, waiting for housemanship. So within that, that period, uh, since this is already online, uh, maybe they could be one of those participants joining in the oral detect online module. So yes. uh, I'll link Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I think that's that's very, very useful. So thanks, Prof. Jennifer. Can you also um, wait for the uh, Q&A session at the end? Yes, uh, we'll definitely. have the Q&A session later on. OK, Thank our, our next speaker, uh, last but not least, very important, we have Professor IR Dr. Fatima Ibrahim from the Center for Innovation in Medical Engineering, CIME, also a renowned researcher. Uh, she has done lots and you see her names everywhere. Uh, she received her BSc, uh, Bachelor of Science from Marquette University in US, obtained her uh, Master's in Science of Electronics Medical Systems from UK in 1994 and PhD in Biomedical Engineering from UM in 2005. She is a Certified Chartered Professional Engineer with Practicing Certificate since 2012 and currently a Professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, Advisor for the Center for Innovation in Medical Engineering and Center for Printable Electronics UM. Her research areas are wide includes detection and monitoring of infectious disease and foodborne pathogens, that's very important, carbon MEMS and uh, stroke NEMS, biosensing, diagnostic, bioinstrumentation, AI, artificial intelligence, the new buzzword in town, and IoT or Internet of Things, integration in medicine as well as psychology, uh, psycho psychological measurements and modeling. So over to you, Prof. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Noren, for such a very uh, good uh, introduction. So let me try to share my slide, if I can share it. So can you see my slide now? OK, so I can, so I can control my slide then. <laughs> OK, so. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. So first of all, on behalf of the Center for Innovation Medical Engineering, we would like to thank uh, the, the uh, IPPP for inviting us to share our center with all the staff here. And uh, for your information, I'm the founder and also the advisor at present for a Center for Innovation Medical Engineering. So this center was founded in 2013. So I just want to mention that uh, most of the slides are copyrighted because we already part of it commercialized and some of them are very confidential. So and however, if you are interested, you can get a request from her for a copy. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, introduce the objective of the center when we first set up. The first objective actually, we wanted to be the center of excellence in healthcare and medical engineering. 
And then the second one, we would like to serve as a focal point for governments, university, uh, research institutes, and also medical related industry. And the third one is like, we would like to integrate and collaborate with industry for commercialization prototypes and patterns developed in the center, in university layer and others. So if you can see that uh, this is our objective and we are more towards doing research that are industrial driven and also towards commercialization. So these are the research scope that we are focusing on on our bio sensor. We are focusing on the bio MEMS, microfluidics, uh, compact disc, and then on medical instrumentation, uh, bio sensor on carbon NEMS and, and NEMS. So what actually is NEMS and NEMS? is a micro electromechanical system. So it means that uh, we have a sensor that can detect a mechanical at the same time electrical signal. So we combine it in a nano technology and also micro technology. And then we also have medical informat uh, informatics. So whatever the clinical data in the hospital, we can uh, transfer into a useful information using artificial intelligence in medicine and also do further medical signal processing. And lastly, our research focus is more on medical diagnostic devices. So at the moment now, during this pan, uh, pan, uh, COVID pandemic, we are very active in doing medical device uh, diagnostic and commercialization. I would like to introduce uh, the structure and organization of the center. So basically now, uh, at the moment, I'm the advisor and then Dr. Noraisha from Electrical Engineering uh, Department is the head of the center. And since you know that the names of the center is Medical Engineering, it means that the marriage between the engineers and also the Faculty of Medicine. So therefore, we have two deputy uh, deputy head for our center. So one is the deputy head for the engineering headed by Dr. Mas Shahidayana and the second one is the deputy head of medicine, Faculty of Medicine, Professor Tan Maupin. And uh, we have our research officer, Dr. Nurul, our technician, and also we have a part-time engineer in our center, uh, Mr. Karun. And if you look at into the area of expertise that we are involved in our members, they are not limited to this area. We have material and physics, chemistry, microbiology, medicines, faculty of medicine, engineering, business and economics. And for the faculty of medicine, you can see that we have many uh, departments that already involved with our a center that already made collaboration and successful story. For example, we have been working with uh, the Department of Geatric with Professor Sharul and Professor Tan, and we are working with uh, the Department of Neurology with Professor Lim, uh, Rehabilitation, Piotomics, and then we have the Regeneration Medicines, Urologist with Professor Azad, and Gynecology, Cardiology, Surgery, Facet parasitologists and many more. So we hope that, you know, we, we would like to invite more the members of Faculty of Medicine who are interested to join us and do research together with us. And for the uh, Center International Collaboration, we already signed up a memorandum of understanding with many of these uh, universities. For example, uh, we have uh, recently, the latest that we already signed MOU with Professor Goran from University of Serbia because we obtained the Horizon 2020 grant. And the second uh, latest that we already obtained is from MIT University with Professor Eric Elm that we are working on the global microbiome that I'll be introduced a little bit on that. And these are all the the professor that we are working all over the country and university and we already have publication together and also uh, prototypes together that we share and commercialization. Not forgetting for the national collaborator, we also have the local university to work with us and internally in university Malaya center like Center for Nocerel, Center for AMMP and also a Center for Oral Cancer Research and a Coordinating Center Prof uh, Jennifer. Uh, recently for this oral cancer that we are doing for the Horizon Grant 2020. Uh, uh, we are not only doing research, but we also provide services and consultation. So the consultation that we are actively doing at the moment now on the research and innovation and also medical device registration. So lately now in the uh, COVID pandemic, there's so many industrial that would like to register their their product of, uh, under medical device uh, authority and we help them to do their medical device registration. 
and we also do workshops and seminar and international conference. For information, uh, the centre have a biannual international conference that we call it Isabel, and it's very actively uh, being running, and we publish that conference uh, journal, I mean journal and also proceeding in the ISI proceeding that we have a collaboration with the Springer publisher. At the same time, we also do research as a service and a contract research and research facility. And we also have a clinic uh, whereby we call it a clinic audit solat. And then we have a training facility for biomedical engineering and medical device. For your information, Medical Device Authority already uh, set up a training uh, module for the uh, continuous uh, continuous uh, medical engineering. And one of uh, the subjects that we are providing for the training facility is to train all the in biomedical engineer in Malaysia. And this uh, training that we provide is certified by Medical Device Authority. So we obtain that recognition from the Medical Device Authority to give the training. And another service that we do is on commercialization. So we help uh, the researcher how to accelerate their research and how to commercialize their research. And these are the research highlight that we would like to highlight to you that uh, is in going for commercialization and already commercialized. One of the uh, recent uh, one that we have already developed is a lab on compact disc. So when we say that lab on compact disc for ELISA means that whatever your conventional ELISA that you, you did it in the laboratory can be automated on a compact disc. So when we say compact disc, it is made from a polycarbonate uh, uh, plastics and everything, uh, the reservoir uh, and also the processes of all the chemical processes are being automated on this uh, lab, uh, in this disk. So that's why we call it lab on compact disk. And this uh, is the future of the diagnostic labs that we are going to do. And another one that we are doing is on the poly uh, uh, coated nylon membrane as a platform for dengue detection. So what we did is that we have already, de already developed a polymetallic uh, coated nylon membrane with a control surface carboxyl group in order to enhance the detection of signal of dengue detection in ELISA experience uh, experiments. So if you can see that what we have developed is just like an uh, additional biosensor here. So the biosensor that we have developed, we have developed into two uh, dimension. One is a 2D dimension, is a paper base. Another one is a 3D dimension, means that uh, um, is a 3D, is a spiral. So this, by putting this uh, biosensor at the conventional 96 ELISA, it can enhance the detection of the dengue virus. So for example, the normal detection of the dengue virus will take about 10,000 limit of detection uh, to detect for dengue virus. But however, using our, uh, our biosensor, you need only 117 of these uh, viruses to be detect positive. So uh, this uh, product has been already in the process of negotiation uh, with the University of St. George's and also the company in UK, and we are in the process of getting license and commercialization. And uh, these are another project that is uh, already developed. So for your information, this project that we have developed is in collaboration with all the researcher in the Faculty of Medicine. So for example, this is from the Department of Geatric with Professor uh, Sharu and also Professor Tan Maupin. So this product has been commercialized, has been licensed by the industrial uh, elderly dementia patient monitoring devices, whereby it can be able uh, to uh, detect and also monitor whether the dementia patient is getting out from the bed and whether they are wandering from the place because there is a sensor at the bed and at the same time at the door. And we also have a GPS uh, tracking so that when the patient is wandering in the hospital whatsoever, we can be able to take, uh, track uh, the patient. So these are the latest uh, innovation that we have already developed. And we are now uh, looking also for uh, many more companies who are interested to commercialize this. Another one that uh, the best, uh, we can say that the best seller of our research, we call it as a multi-frequency bioimpedance analyzer, the diagnostic tool, we call it Smart MF. Why we call it a Smart MF and our best seller innovation? Because it is a very novel uh, a device. Using this device, 
with a different application software using artificial intelligence, we can be able to diagnose the effect of a physical activity. For example, when a person doing some exercise or some people are doing Tai Chi or yoga and the one that we are focusing uh, on the effect of a Muslim prayer when they perform their Salat. So this uh, uh, innovation has been uh, commercial, uh, been licensed and in the process of commercialize, commercialized. And the recent one that we are working with uh, Prof Adiba's team is to develop the software for detecting the HIV virus, uh, HIV uh, disease monitoring. So what uh, we did over here is that using our smart MF, the bioimpedance non-invasively, uh, we will uh, measure the patient and then with the medication given by the doctors, whether this HIV patient is the survival rate or non-survival. So the doctor do not have to take the blood anymore daily, but using this non-invasively. So we can be able to predict whether the medication given by the doctor can be able to uh, improve the patient uh, for the survival rate or not. So these are another innovation that we already patented and also in the process of commercialization already being licensed. And recently we already got the Ignite uh, Tech One grant with a commercial company, uh, Nobi Basi, that already want to commercialize it. So these are the smart wearable device for monitoring muscle activities. And it can be able to uh, measure the muscle fatigue and also can measure whether you are having low back pain. So if you can see that during this uh, COVID pandemic, many people working and sitting long hours in the chair. So by putting this sensor at the low back of your uh, wearably, they can uh, be able to give a sound and detection to say that, okay, stop uh, sitting. Uh, you know, they will beep beep and say that you have a, a muscle fatigue already. So you have to stand up and then you have to like walk around so that your muscle would not get a muscle spasm and muscle fatigue. And uh, in long hours, if you keep continuing, you might get experience a low back pain. So at the same time, uh, this is for the dancing for the muscle uh, fatigue. But at the same time, we are now working with Professor uh, Dr. Anwar in the rehabilitation unit. And we are doing the validation with the real patient uh, for using this uh, low back pain monitoring for the rehabilitation because they have a software that uh, using IoT that can be able to detect and monitoring the uh, improvement of the patient. And uh, these are another device that uh, uh, we have already developed uh, in the process of uh, actually we already uh, filed the pattern and in the process of getting some uh, company who are interested to commercialize this product. These are working with Professor uh, Azad, uh, Professor uh, Tan and also Professor um, 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 uh, Shankar on the uh, male sexual dysfunction and uh, we are looking uh, for industrial partner for this product. So basically uh, in our uh, center we have uh, a very unique uh, facility that we call it BioMEMS facility. So these are the facility that we have in, uh, in Malaysia, the only one in Malaysia and also in Asia representing because I, as I mentioned to you that we have the ring uh, network research with Professor Mark Mado for this uh, carbon MEMS in the world and uh, in Malaysia we are representing for that uh, carbon, carbon ring network research and we have the very small clean room that can be able uh, to do the small uh, bio MEMS NEMS uh, sensor using the carbons as the platform. And these are also the facility, uh, spin coater, the electro spinning, mass aligner and all those things. Uh, so it can also be available under rental basis. And these are the facility that uh, we have that can be able to uh, fabricate the compact disc, lab on compact disc, as you can see that you can have your ELISA on this compact disc. So I'm open for other researchers in University Malaya who are interested to collaborate with me for other application like uh, for malaria, for typhoid and so on, because it can be realized because we already have done the proof of concept for the ELISA on the compact disc, so the application can be uh, many. And uh, these are the one that uh, we are showing you how lab on compact disc can be able to detect all kind of uh, viruses and bacteria. And recently now uh, we are working with Professor Tay from the uh, Faculty of uh, Medicine in the Department of Microbiologists. We are in the final stage of finalizing our 
uh, TAC1 grant uh, for sepsis uh, diagnostic using this uh, uh, compact disc and also biosensor. Uh, so we are in the second final year to get approval for our grant. So hopefully we'll get that grant and we can accelerate this research. And uh, I would like to share with you that it's a very interesting uh, research that I have been doing with the uh, I and my team in the Center for Biomedical Engin uh, Center for uh, Medical Engineering, working with my Mississippi Institute of Technology with Professor Eric. So, what the research that we are doing, we are now doing with Professor working with Professor Yvonne and Professor uh, Tan from Faculty of Medicine. Together, we do uh, the research on the gut microbiome. Uh, in the indigenous uh, people in Malaysia. So we have already uh, done the study uh, in 2018 and we have done in in the Gua Musang and also Tasik Banding and also in the area of the Kuala Lumpur. And it's very interesting for us to categorize the microbial biodiversity of the human guts in Malaysia indigenous people. And we also investigate the guts microbiome of Peninsular Malaysia indigenous in three different locations. So we already got the first finding and we are in the process of uh, writing the paper for publication. So these are the special prime minister project that we already obtained in 2005, about 2 million uh, grant from the special prime minister to find the effect of study of solid uh, from the biomedical engineering perspective. And out of that 2 million, we have so coming out so many innovation, the prototype that I mentioned to you, and we also open a clinic. And also uh, we uh, already come out with the services. And these are the services that we are providing in our center especially for the low back pain and also for the um, one that for the men uh, erectile dysfunction and therapy we are working with the faculty of medicine so if you are interested to know whether your solat you are performing all these years are good or not good please come to our uh, center we can be able to do your audit solat and tell and tell your scoring whether your solat is excellent average or poor so if it's poor means that uh, your solat that you are performing does not give a very good body composition to your body after you perform your solat means that one of the parameter that we are measuring is your cholesterol means that after you perform your solat physically your cholesterol increase transient increase so these are the things that we educate the muslim that to perform solat uh, uh, i mean in the correct manner according to the biomechanical posture and these are the book publication that we have already published is available on sale at i think the coprasi and also in our center so these books are all the collaboration with our faculty of medicine like for example the sakit pinggang is the collaboration with the uh, rehabilitation uh, department with professor ramizan at that time now with professor uh, anwar and then pencegahan penyakit jantung this one we work with professor wan azman that we come out with a module on how is the good therapy for uh, giving the therapy for people having uh, heart disease and then uh, this is on the signal of the brain where people are praying and this on the senaman renggangan that we work with the rehabilitation uh, unit and the mati pucuk so these are the work that we done together with professor azad and the kesan posture on solat and kesihatan so if you are interested you can have this uh, book for for you know uh, for your own uh, reading and um, uh, knowledge and these are the uh, science solat therapy clinic that already open in our uh, center it was being initiated and launched by uh, Yang Ahmad Berhormat uh, Datuk Sri Idris Jusso in 2014 at that time. And uh, now we are providing to the uh, public, even to the staff and also the public. And uh, uh, we are very actively promoting, uh, giving the awareness uh, to all uh, the Malaysian and also overseas. I went to Brunei, uh, we went to Brunei and we went to Singapore, we went to Japan to educate people about the good effect of solat. And that's why we say masyarakat celik sains salat and also imam celik sains salat. So this is one of the program. We already got a special grant from Datuk Sri Idris Jusso that want to, uh, you know, to inspire the youngsters so that they can be the imam to their uh, to their parents and their sibling so that they can teach their, their, you know, their sibling and their family the proper way of salat. So we train the small people to train the uh, elderly. And so on. So these are the series of seminar that uh, webinar that we are being conducted. 
And these are all the workshops that we are being conduct, uh, conducting the workshop. So all our international collaborator, when they came to our center, we will uh, conduct uh, the workshop together with them and give talk to University Malaya for free. And these are another uh, medical device that uh, we are being doing. As I told you that one of our objective for this center is commercialization. And we already proved that we have done uh, many uh, commercialization, many success story. And we would like to share with you, if you are interested, uh, how to accelerate your research to commercialization uh, work. And uh, these are on uh, giving the industrial talk on other things on entrepreneurship and so on. And these are on the research and discussion that we have whenever the you know the re researchers came and we have a discussion and activities that uh, we are conducted. And these are the latest uh, that we conducted with the MIT team and our team are going to go over uh, maybe May next year uh, in return to pay or respect a visit and do the research over there. And these are the negotiation that uh, we are negotiating with the uh, St. George's and also the industrial partner in Malaysia during trying to commercialize and license our innovation for the polymer nylon membrane for the dengue. So these are the uh, seminar and the discussion that we did for the Horizon Grant 2020 with the CELSA uh, on the oral, microbi oral uh, detection cancer. And these are the seminar that I mentioned to you that the Isabel seminar, we are very actively. Uh, and then uh, we are going to have the seminar in 2022. So look uh, look up for this uh, seminar that we are having for next year. And these are the awards that we already been receiving. One of the best award that we have received is the Malaysia Commercialization Year. So uh, MCY, Malaysia Commercialization Year for the 2020 for our innovation for the Smart MF and also being be recognized for the Malaysian Medical Device Award for the best award innovation of the year and the special award. So these are the awards that recently we got it, uh, not forgetting during the pen, uh, COVID pandemic, we still actively doing commercialization. So we uh, enter it uh, online. So surprisingly, this award is only for women. So if women who have a pattern only for women in the group, so I would encourage you to uh, enter for next year. So we won many awards. So these are the best award that we got, special prize award for Korean Institute of Pattern Information, gold awards and a special award. So these are in collaboration Prof Rohana and also Dr. Mimis uh, and myself on the uh, on the um, on the aging, okay. So we do on the project on the anti aging. So this is one of the project that we have already conducted. So awards recognition winners and not forgetting that we are also helping the students in STEMs. We are being the consultant for the students uh, from the uh, asrama, you, you know, scholar asrama and XTF and also scholar. Uh, SMK, Hulu, Selangor and so on, looking at their innovation and we help them to give advice and also to accelerate uh, their, their uh, product. And these are the product commercialization, the one of the success story that is the highest uh, license ever in University of Malaya and we won the special uh, commercialization award uh, last, uh, last year. And these are the one recently during the COVID pandemic uh, is our rezeki. We can say that uh, we managed to get a company who want to commercialize our uh, low back pain uh, wearable, low back pain monitoring. And we uh, finally got the Cradle grant. It's about 500,000 together with the industrial. So I would encourage uh, uh, any of you interested, uh, we, can, we can give you some uh, tips and advice how to get this grant. And these are the media coverage. And these are the medical device consultation. We are doing very actively. Uh, I can say that tak cukup tangan. <laughs> so whoever interested uh, to learn from me, you are most welcome to be my member and I can be uh, training you to how to do the medical device product registration uh, in the medical device and how to develop a, a, a industrial in order for you to open a medical device company or a manufacturing, you must get this good distribution practice or medical device. So we help you to set up this thing and to get this certificate. And we also help you to get the special assess and conditional approval for this medical device during this uh, pen, pen, uh, COVID pandemic. 
And these are the research opportunity at the center that whoever are interested and in listening to this talk, if you are interested to collaborate with us, you are most welcome. Recently, when we say biomedical engineering, not only in the Faculty of Medicine, but now recently, I'm working the Faculty of Academic Pengajian Islam with one of the Ustad. So we got one of the uh, Ustad to register master with us, already register, and we want to see the effect of Rukia recitation towards the body composition. So means that if this uh, person who are being, uh, you know, uh, being, um, they say that if the person is being spelled by this evil spirit and so on, and this Ustad, <laughs> Ustad is going to uh, do some recitation. So I'm going to uh, measure the body composition before the recitation of the Rukia and after recitation of the Rukia. So then it's quite interesting and very challenging. This is something new that nobody have done in the world. So we are going to try to investigate it. So these are all the things that we are looking forward, especially in evaluating the biosensing performance of intraoral electrochemical biosensor. We are working this with the OCRCC Center, Prof. Jennifer's uh, uh, lab, uh, center, and we are working with uh, Prof. Jennifer, Prof. Uh, Maz Mazlipa, and Dr. Karen on this work. It's ongoing on the horizon 2020. So um, then uh, this is the research opportunity at the center. The recently that we have developed this on the intraoral wireless electrochemical. So not only on the oral that we are going to detect, but we also going to detect the carers. So, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, we get uh, when we eat a lot and then we got all these sugar things and then, you know, we can get a carers. So we want to see uh, whether we can detect the pH, uh, pH level in the saliva at the same time at the same time when they detect the ph is very acidic we will infuse uh, the fluoride automatically so these are the latest uh, innovation that we are going to do together with the Aura horizon 2020 project together with the oral and also the fluoride uh, detections uh, these are the research fellow and alumni that already been in our center so we uh, we invite we would like to welcome you to be the partner partner of our team member for postgraduates, uh, postdoctoral research and sabbatical. So Dr. Professor Siti Hanum is one of our local uh, professor who have done uh, the sabbatical uh, in my center and she's the one who are doing on the wearable low back pain and uh, attachment. And then we got uh, Dr. Robert uh, Gorkin that already uh, being a fellow in our center now, the CEO and founder of the Erderm Technology. And we got Dr. Salah, uh, now the CEO of the Diverter uh, system. So most of them are entrepreneur when they already came and they are doing on this biosensor and uh, microfluidic uh, research. And we have Dr. Kamel, the senior engineer now in the toolbox uh, medical innovation. And recently now, currently, uh, we have uh, Mr. Zelko uh, from University of Novaset under our Horizon 2020 research in attachment in our center. I think he's in this uh, uh, participant listening to this talk <laughs> today. <laughs> okay, so not forgetting about the society, we also have our CSR call for sponsorship and now want to go to back to school. We are looking for kids uh, face masks, hand sanitizer and stationery to be distributed to the un underprivileged kids around the Serdang and also the Sepang area. So these are the workshop and training that we uh, provide uh, at our center. So if you think that you have an expertise in this area, you can be part of our uh, member and you can use our platform to conduct your uh, workshop and seminar we can organize for you. So these are the list of the series that we already have in our center. And uh, these are the commercialization workshop series that we are conducting. Uh, if you are interested, do let us know. Uh, you can scan at the registration there. Uh, the commercialization that we are doing is from lab to market, bridging research to commercialization, how to conduct, how to conduct the market validation for your innovation product. So we help you how to conduct your market validation and we help you also how to write a good business proposal to your investor, especially to, to the, you know, to the government grant, cradle and also to your potential uh, investor industry. And we also help you to prepare a perfect five minutes uh, investor pitch and we also help you how to start up a business. So these are the commercialization workshop series that uh, we provide in our center. So I, with that, uh, I thank you. <laughs> uh, I end my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry for taking such a long time to, to give my presentation. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you, Prof. I think uh, that, that was very, very interesting and very impressive work that the Center or CIME have been doing and yourself as well as a researcher. I'm very interested uh, to know that uh, this is also the month of Movember, they call it, M-O-V-M-B-R. So it's Men's Health uh, Awareness Month and I see a lot of men's health work that have been done by CIME uh, and, and all, all the... Uh, the uh, 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 sense of work that that's very very impressive, um, and also interested in 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 the medical device consultation that you have. Uh, I'm sure tak cukup tangan, <laughs> considering that is one of the things that is coming up right now. A lot of uh, people are actually very interested in coming out with device, and there is uh, 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 I'm not sure whether people know, but there is regulations on medical device you can't just come up with a device and and try to sell it out but you must actually have go through all the guidelines and all the uh other things that you mentioned and i'm, I'm glad that there is a, a a space for for people who are interested to actually seek for advice and consultation from you but i can imagine how difficult this is in a sense that uh, uh, if you don't have a team and you're doing on your own, so uh, the, the questions are going to be, or, or the consultations are going to be huge. So thank you so much for doing all the work, uh, all the wonderful work that you've done. The next session we have is actually the Q&A. So I would welcome anyone who would like to ask question to either raise your hand or even on your mic uh, and, and uh, raise your hand and then we can on the mic and uh, we can ask the questions. But while waiting, I've already have questions chat uh, typed on the chat box. So it looks like one question each for uh, the presenters today. Uh, I'll start off with uh, uh, maybe Prof. Fatima, since your, your question is up here. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a question on adoption of uh, wearable sensors, right? We talk about wearable sensors, application and IoT in health and well-being. So uh, the question is asking about what are the barriers that you see or the challenges that you see among our population in the sense of uh, picking up or, or using the sensors or, or these applications? And can you share with us um, how do you overcome these barriers? Or is it in certain populations sahaja yang ada these barriers? Or, or it's a barrier that cuts across everyone else in the world? Okay, thank you very much uh, for the question. Yeah, it's a very, very uh, good question. So uh, we have many barriers. The first bar barrier is to get through with the medical doctors. To get, <laughs> to the, get the medical doctor to accept this new innovation as compared to the conventional technique that they've already been doing. Because for your information, the conventional technique they have been doing is just a questionnaire. It's just a questionnaire that they ask how pain is your pain today and so on. So it's quite like qualitative. So the one that we already innovate is a quantitatively measured that we put uh, the signal at the lumbar four and lumbar five and we measure the spas uh, muscle spasm. So I, I'm happy that most of our medical doctors in University of Malaya Medical Center, they are very open minded. They are very, very uh, adventurous. And together, uh, you know, we already get the support. So that's the first hurdle. So once the first hurdle that we already gone through, we went for the uh, we went for the second hurdle. So the second hurdle is to get uh, the uh, the patient uh, to to accept the uh, the society acceptance of our uh, medical device that we have innovated. So that's the second step steps. And then uh, uh, we will ask the uh, patient whether with this innovation, are you interested to use it? Are you very comfortable to use it? And uh, what, what do you think about this innovation? Uh, because it is all IoT now, it's all being controlled by the handphone. For those who are not very, uh, uh, you know, uh, very familiar with the IoT, they might have some problems. So, but then it seems that uh, the response are very good because they say that this is a very convenient. They don't have, you know, like uh, to come over to the hospital. They can just bring this at home and measure it and send the result to the doctors via the, the you know, via the IoT things. So the, the third hurdle I just want to say is that once you already got this one is to get uh, the industrial partner. So to get the industrial partner to, to accept this innovation and to support you, uh, to support you in terms of getting funding or so also in terms of commercializing this thing because we couldn't be able to commercialize it because we are full-time lecturer here in UM. So we innovate and we pass it, the, we pass the button to the people who are in the expert. So to get the industrial. 
So in order to get this industrial, we have to be very active. We have to make ourselves visible. We have to go to any kind of like forums and so on. So honestly, I met this uh, professor. Uh, I met this Mr. Joe at one of the forum in uh, intellectual properties, and we become friends. And uh, he's interested on innovation, so that's how it comes. And for your information, he set up a brand new, fresh company just to innovate and commercialize this product. <laughs> So then the fourth hurdle is that on getting the registration of medical device authority, certification and medical device authority. So actually that's uh, the process of, you know, doing this kind of research and uh, the, the challenges that you'll be facing. So you have to be very resilient and very, very uh, determined uh, to, to get this to, to be successful. Thank you, Prof. I, I, I never expected the first one to be the first one because uh, I always have the impression that it's a community that will be uh, a, a bit resistance on IoT. But you are right. Yeah, yeah. The, the, one of the first few would be the medical professions themselves to actually accept uh, there should be a change or there are a variety of ways to look at uh, to, to treat patients or to gauge, like you said, if you're talking about pain, the obvious way that you usually ask is how do you gauge your pain today or, you know, you have, you've got that pain score and then the figures and, and asking them whether they're feeling pain. But yeah, an objective measure would also be very, very useful in, in that sense in terms of treatment and managing. So I guess the other large proportion group of people would be the Ministry of Health doctors then to then when when the products are out, whether they would also be um, on board to use it. So thanks, thank you, Prof. Um, th and thank you for the, the person who asked. Is there anyone else who would ask question? Any raise of hands? Uh, okay, while waiting, I've got another one from uh, one of the participants who wrote uh, to me. I um, uh, can't really see who it was, a bit anonymous, but it's okay. Um, this question is for Professor Dr. Wan Haliza. Um, Professor Dr. Wan, are you there? Prof. Wan? Still with you, yeah. Uh, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Prof. Wan. Uh, soalan dia berbunyi begini. It is very impressive that you have shown all the work that uh, LDMRC have done. Uh, even though you showed the slide on 2020, uh, I assume that 2021 pencapaian juga adalah memberangsangkan in the, yeah. in the sense of publication and high quality work. So the question the person asks, uh, what are the, what's your recipe? What are, I'm, I'm, all of us face challenges in terms of research uh, mm -hmm. with regards to COVID-19. So how do you overcome uh, can you share your experience on how you overcome all these challenges and actually just perform just as well as it was before in 2018 and 2019? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Um, uh, you don't get who is asking that question. Uh, not okay. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. That's fine, that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, COVID-19 has um, some sort of like challenge us in many ways, actually. Okay. So, and it uh, somehow asks us to uh, change our way of working. Okay, that is definitely true. I mean, that one we can avoid, right? Uh, uh, I would say that uh, we have many hurdles uh, in overcome uh, these challenges. And uh, I think the, 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 the performance, I would say, uh, not that impressive during COVID-19. Uh, in reality, okay, because I showed a 2020 slide just now, isn't it? 2021, perhaps, uh, I mean, we should be some sort of like uh, moving forward, but uh, uh, from our data, our performance is more or less the same. I mean, it's not like uh, achieving achieving more than uh, what we achieved in 2020, okay? Right, 2020 is the start of COVID already, isn't it? Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, yes, yes. We can yes, hear you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the most important thing when we face this kind of challenge is uh, cooperation among ourselves. Okay. Cooperation among ourselves and uh, try to solve the problem together in the group. Okay. In the group. Um, and uh, we, one of the recipes that we do in LDR MRSC is avoid friction among each other, 
okay, avoid friction among each other because when there are friction among yourself, it will somehow jeopardize the, um, what we call the progress that we try to make in the center. So uh, we would like very much to solve um, science problem instead of relationship problem, okay? So, um, so uh, the first thing that we do uh, when we try to collaborate with people is try to, to, to get to know them so that uh, we can be sure that we can work uh, with them uh, uh, in a proper manner without much, uh, what we call, um, frictions, without much uh, argument afterwards, because this will hinder uh, the progress that we uh, have planned to achieve. Okay. So the first thing we do in LDMRC when we collaborate is we uh, check the background of the uh, uh, people. Uh, uh, we make sure that uh, they can be, uh, work, we, we can work together with them. Okay, we can work together with them. And the second thing that we normally do uh, in LDMRC is when we start a project, we always sign what we call non-disclosure agreement uh, with our members of collaborators. So that is to avoid future friction if there, uh, there are any, because at, uh, at early stage research is a subset of like, uh, people would be um, excited to collaborate, people would be uh, looking forward to collaborate, eh? but when there are problems, you know, when there are uh, interests, uh, then uh, different interests among the uh, researchers, then uh, friction comes, then uh, that's when you know it, it, it falls apart. Okay, that's when it falls apart. So we try to solve the problem from the beginning uh, by imposing NDA. Uh, whenever we want to collaborate with people, uh, we will sign NDA among the researchers to avoid all this um, uh, future problem. Okay, so that is the second thing that we we do in LDMRC. And um, uh, the third thing I think I would like to mention here is um, we always collaborate with people uh, who are interested in the same research. I mean, that is typical, you know, th same research uh, with uh, the same goal, same interest, you know. So um, that will uh, somehow enhance uh, our progress in research. But uh, uh, I see that... Uh, um, just now, uh, CIME has, Prof. Fatima has advanced, I mean, has a lot of uh, uh, advances in, in terms of commercialization, collaboration with industry, which I think our center perhaps can learn from CIME. Yeah, I think that is the thing I think we can uh, work on to improve ourselves. Yeah, okay. I hope I, I have answered the question. Thank you, Prof. Wan Haliza. Uh, I think soalan yang, uh, orang yang bertanya tadi, Encik Ahmad, tapi saya tak pasti dari mana because it's under guest. But thank mm -hmm. you so much for the recipes and uh, recipe of success and all the advice and things that uh, your center LDMRC have done. And I'm sure all of us after ni akan bertanya kepada Prof. Fatima. Prof. Fatima. <laughs> because we do see that uh, you have done quite a lot, a, a huge amount of work under CIME and all the uh, advice uh, that we might need to to um, no, to seek from you. So I'm sure Prof. Wan yeah. nanti akan yes. berhubung dengan Prof. Fatima. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think kita belajar so daripada dia in terms of commercialization yeah. of product. Yeah, that, that is uh, things that I think we are lacking at, at, at the centre. Yeah, I think this is also one of the things that what we want to do for this session uh, is to to make sure that we know each other better and, and uh, things that we can help each other in terms of improving our research. But there, there is a trade off, you know, if you want to commercialize, you couldn't be able to publish many <laughs> because yes. part of this, uh, that's the reason that, you know, we are focusing on commercialization. So publication is uh, the minimum that we do at least at least one just to, you know, to secure that. Yeah, because yeah. our center uh, focus more on fundamental research. So um, that's why uh, we focus on uh, publications of knowledge, things like that, share of but knowledge. Still, that knows. But still, although you are focusing on fundamental, still you can uh, uh, file a pattern for that. And you yes. can also, you know, try to license your fundamental uh, to mm. the industrial. Yeah, yeah we, we do that as well. Yeah, we do that. I mean, file patterns. So we have also uh, patterns. Uh, in our center. Okay. 
but commercialization and get uh, funding for commercialize i think that that is something um, uh, we have to learn but like uh, prof uh, fatima say uh, there is a trade off between uh, you know uh, achieving academic uh, recognition in terms of publication things like that and achieving the other side which is commercialization okay but so in a way in um we have uh, i mean centers that focus on different things which which is very good in, uh, overall uh, overall i mean we achieve in many directions so uh, that would be very good to the university i think i think uh, i think this is good like if our center is focusing on the commercialization we are helping the myra for the university for commercialization but then your center is very very excellent in publication then you're helping on the publication for the myra kpi so then we complement each other's strengths you see so we couldn't be able to do uh, together so we have to look at the strengths too yes I think, uh, in a way I, yeah what you're saying is true but yeah. uh, I think uh, it would be interesting also if we can somehow uh, involve in one or two uh, uh, prototype uh, commercialization. Like, like one of our members is doing that uh, with a UK company. Uh, so Thank hopefully you. if that is successful, that would be uh, what we call uh, a stepping stone for our center to in, in that direction. Yeah, I think uh, like, Provenga, yeah. Is, Provenga is my mentee. Mm -hmm. Provenga is okay. my man. He's learning yeah. from you. Okay, that's yeah, good. yeah. So I, I, I've given him to, uh, I've given him uh, to, uh, to, uh, you know, to participate in the leaf. So because uh, I would encourage you know uh, to participate uh, in this international program. So there are many programs available. So at that time, I think I mentee two of them. Uh, Prof Benga is the, uh, the one of them, and then they went for the in London for the leaders of innovation uh, fellowship. So I think I would encourage uh, any of you interested, you can go for that uh, program. So that program is really good because it is, uh, the trainer is from University of Oxford. So Osangshia is one of the technology transfer. So they give you the training on how uh, they, uh, how for you to understand uh, your prototypes and then how from research to commercialization. So I think I think Benga has learned a lot and he won the special award at that time. <laughs> and now I think uh, uh, he also attended for the University of Malaya commercialized uh, UMCIC program under the UMDT, uh, UMDT program. And I think soon I think uh, he is one of the success story in your center. So I would like to congratulate you because he's going to start up a company with the UK and that company is on the I think uh, e-profiler, yeah. So we are very supportive, uh, supporting him. We are supporting him on that thing. Okay, so yeah, what, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, uh, if there is opportunity um, uh, to commercialize uh, basic science, that would be uh, most welcome, I think. Because I think uh, Prof. Benga have shown yeah. one. <laughs> yes, <doing> yes. <laughs> yeah. So we are yeah, also in the centre going to learn from him as well. Yeah, okay. Great, great. I think that that's really one of the things that what we are trying to do interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary and coming up with uh, not just research in terms of publication, but also innovation as well. And uh, the next step is trying to get the industries to be involved in the innovation. So th those are the challenges or those are the exciting things that's happening. That's not calling challenges. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's exciting new things that, um, that, that are, that's happening in the research well uh, so I open the floor if there is any other questions anyone else asking another question let me check the chat box if there is one. Oh, there is one okay this question oh this is nice this question is actually for uh, Prof Jennifer Prof Jennifer are you still there yes I am okay cool um, so the the question is like this it's on the uh, yeah the cancer awareness because breast cancer is October is this the cancer awareness day uh like I said November men's health prostate cancer is in November and you've got Macau that's oral cancer also in in uh, in November um could you share some of the local findings on oral cancer you mentioned just now a bit but could you share more details about the oral cancer findings in Malaysia and uh, for this year uh we've seen the activities that you mentioned uh but are there any anything that's happening next year or something that we are looking forward to over to you prof yeah okay thank you for the question 
Well, in terms of uh, um, <clears throat> when mouth cancer awareness is, it's actually uh, not the whole month of November. We've chosen it as one week. It's a mouth cancer awareness week, hence Macau. And so uh, every year we have it. And it's always been a face-to-face -face event. And it's only uh, beginning from last year that because of the pandemic, uh, we had a very indoor kind of closed door event with minimal attendees. Uh, and this year it was completely um, uh, online. And actually I'm happy to share uh, on this, uh, probably I don't have it here, but I would certainly share with the research cluster our the video of the the whole launching and so similarly next year we will also have an awareness week in november um so that's actually the main event for mouth cancer other than that we do have our usual exhibitions which are done by all agencies at their respective uh, venues it's it's also um the ministry of health will also uh, be involved, whereby all states in the ministry uh, will have uh, echo launchings of Mouth Cancer Week uh, in November, and they will run uh, activities at the state level uh, in terms of mouth cancer screening and such activities in their state. Um, <clears throat> is that the whole question, or did I miss one part of it? <laughs> about the uh, facts, details yeah, of mouth cancer. Findings okay. Of our, yeah. okay, now the, the unique thing about mouth cancer is it is not a, its prevalence is low in Malaysia. I think uh, in, in Southeast Asia and Asia, there are other countries which have extremely high prevalence, for example, in India and Pakistan because of the, the, the their habits, related habits. In Malaysia, um, in, contra, in contrary, in contrary, um, uh, we have a lesser amount, but what is unique about it is that it's in a way preventable because it's related to risk habits. The awareness of Malaysian population is so low and um, basically uh, it's it, it brings about a great impact on people when they do suffer from it. And so this is why we are promoting the visibility of mouth cancer in our country. And it's amazing that how <clears throat> uh, many people, many groups of people, because mouth cancer uh, it was the fourth highest cancer among women, Indian women. And it's also um, a very uh, prevalent among indigenous groups. And it's, it's amazing that these indigenous groups who practice these risk habits don't really realize that it is a risk habit and they don't even realize you can get cancer in the mouth. <laughs> so um, these are some of the details that, you know, we have. And uh, but the other some of the other uh, points is uh, about two thirds of Malaysian oral cancer patients to date, they still come at uh, advanced stages. They present at advanced stages, and that is our biggest challenge in the country. Considering it's such a low prevalence, but yet the mortality is high, and as I showed earlier, survival rates for five-year survival rates is, is much lesser than other uh, cancers in the country, and yet it, 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 um, it shares very low visibility. So we are hoping in, you know, to be able to increase awareness, but I think one of the challenges is also um, in, in getting um, a buy-in as well from private sector to, to be aware of this and do their own part. That means private dental practitioners to actually come about and, and do oral cancer screening on people on a routine basis and to increase awareness. And of course the two, um, uh, challenges that that have come out from at least some of the research that I've done uh, with through my postgraduate students is to target the first contact practitioners such as pharmacists, such as medical GPs, because it's been an eye opener from for us through this research findings that uh, our patients don't come to the dentist 
and when they are asked why, they see the medical doctor as the caretaker of their whole body. And dentists are only in charge of the teeth, the gigi. <laughs> so um, therefore, we need to and we need to educate even the and train yeah, our medical GPs at undergraduate level and even at final year uh, to reduce uh, secondary delay. Yeah? Patient delay is the primary delay because of the patient, but then you have another portion of secondary delay where when patients do turn up at the medical GPs, for example, some of the early signs and symptoms are missed out and it's, um, it's uh, understood as it's mistaken for just being a non-normal ulcer, non-healing ulcer, or just a normal growth that would go away. So uh, this is important if we want to reduce the, the late presentation. Our national oral health plan that was uh, formulated from 2011 till 2020 stipulated very clearly that one of the targets was to reach only 30% or lesser of uh, sorry, or more, 30 percent or more of uh, cases being detected at stage one. However, to date, we have not reached that 30 30 percent target. We are still very low. Only 20 percent, I think, are are detected. So there is a great need for to promote early detection and diagnosis. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Prof. Jennifer. I think that's that's uh, yeah, that's really interesting and. Uh, I hope Macau will achieve its objectives. Uh, visible, I mean, making oral cancer more visible and uh, get people to talk about it. Um, to you know, to identify uh, this is uh, something that is preventable. And if you do have some issues with your mouth, do seek help as soon as possible. Um, we are running out of time, so it's already 11.30 and I think, uh, let me check the chat box. Oh, there are no more questions here. So for the last session, can I have everyone to on their video and we would like to take a picture of everyone who's involved in the session this morning? And the um, organizers will take a picture. Chair, yeah, ready everyone? Yes, Rob. Um, can we some sort of like a rough idea how many participants is actually involved? I think close to tadi nampak ada lebih kurang 30 orang. Ranges lah. People come in and out. So now uh -huh. dah ada, now it's 20 I think. Uh, admin, boleh tolong? Boleh mohon bantu? Now it's 21. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Is it, is it, um, I mean, uh, every time when you do this, uh, the yeah, it's it's uh, it's, it's really around. around uh, it was it was earlier on because we've done we've been doing this since July. So much of July mm -hmm. when everyone was under lockdown, the numbers were much higher. But yeah. as we go along, it's uh, roughly about 40, 50. And today I think it's it hits 30. So and that's a very impressive number. So <laughs> well, the woman of the presenters, <laughs> it's a great uh, uh, hallmark. I suppose that the topics are very, very interesting and we got the right person. So, some more on the on the camera, okay? So, do see on on camera. Okay. Everyone ready? Yes. And one, two, three. Okay. Again. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for the session and I would like to thank, thank our three you. speakers, Prof. Jennifer, Prof. Fatima, Prof. Wan Haliza for the very interesting sharing session and uh, and to know that uh, all the very uh, tahniah for all the wonderful achievements that all three centres have been doing and I'm sure are going to do even though regardless of whether we are in pandemic mode, post-pandemic mode, moving to endemic mode, whatever name we call it, but we will still be doing uh, the best of the research and I think one of the reasons that I, I must say is that all of us, all of three of you have been very, very passionate in doing the research that you do. And that this really shows in the presentation that you have done just now. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope the session will be able to promote the research centers uh, to the community as UM community as well as the public, because like I said, we will be uh, putting this up on our uh, social media center 
uh, later. And I hope that we have already advanced or enhanced the knowledge of uh, the things that you have done, you are doing in your centres and things that people can get, seek help as well, and to build collaboration and synergic list, uh, links opportunities. So thank you again. Thank you once thank again you. from Jennifer, Prof Fatima and Prof Wan Haliza. And thank you all for staying with us until the end. So Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, uh, take care everyone. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank okay, you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Stay safe.